Godmother Mint and welcome back to the Mint Coven. Here I'm sharing with you a ritual that I do every year. It starts on winter solstice and ends on January 1st and it's basically a cleansing ritual. I cleanse my jewelry and I start a liquid cleanse as well. I just use a cleansing herb, in my case peppermint, and I drink that for seven days as well. I do continue eating food, but I am a pretty clean eater and I always stick mainly to fruits and veggies during this time. After I wash and cleanse my altar, I then add in the energy of lavender. I like to do a little smoke cleanse and a little adding of yummy energy on there. And then I also like to anoint my altar with oils. And this is a dishadow oil that I got from my Soul Society box. And it is amazing. It smells so nice. I took a walk a few days earlier to get some evergreen boughs. I really love having evergreens in the house during this season. And it really helps to purify and cleanse the air and the area around my sacred space. So I got a bunch of that and placed it all over my altar. It's really nice to add that energy in because it is a really nice natural cleanser. I place a white candle in the center so that I can also use the element of fire to cleanse. And then I put some rosemary and some other bits of pine around the base of the candle as well. I usually put all four elements on my altar every time I do any kind of ritual. So I do have fire and I have air with my incense and then I have water with my goblet and then I have earth of course with all of the plants there as well as those yummy pine cones that smelled so great. Now I start to fill my altar with as much clear quartz and salt as I have. Some of those pieces like that first one was one that I ended up finding outside which was great. And I also got some peppermint from my garden and placed it into my little clear teapot which I'm going to be drinking at the altar. At this time I usually have some words that I recite. Something about cleansing your body, cleansing your spirit, cleansing your space. Um, renewal and regrowth is something nice to say during this time and then I remove all of my jewelry and place it on the big slab of quartz that I have the candle on. Wearing spelled jewelry is really wonderful because it keeps the energy with you all day. It's a great reminder of what you're working on, what you're doing, and of your spiritual growth. I like to take all of my jewelry off and do a big cleanse on it every year and then re-imbue it with the energies that I'm still working on. These pieces are very special to me and they're things that I wear all of the time so they really do need a good cleansing. I got a few new pieces from Etta I Love that I'm going to be wearing all of the time as well. So I want to make sure that they're cleansed before I even put them on, just to have the energy completely blank so that I can fill it with whatever I want. After I place everything on the slab, I go ahead and smoke cleanse them with a nice wand of rosemary and let the smoke really permeate each piece. 
I then begin the ritual of cleansing my body as well. Um, I don't stop eating food, like I said before, but I do keep everything to fruit and veg. And I drink tons and tons of water and peppermint tea and just, you know, pee out all the negativity, <laughs> basically. I then do another ritual where I am imagining the smoke from the rosemary going into my body and removing any impurities on its way out. And I usually do meditate with a giant quartz for quite a while, sometimes an hour. Sometimes I'll even just lie on the floor with the quartz on my chest and take a nap. I do usually do this ritual naked, which is why you see I've changed my clothes, but I don't want to be demonetized, so <laughs> not naked on YouTube. But I usually leave all of my jewelry there for the full seven days, and then on the eighth day I put it all back on while imbuing it with new energy. So it stays there day and night, and every day I light the candle again just to keep that cleansing energy going. This is my engagement ring. It is a lovely onyx and it is bound in some vines. Onyx is wonderful for protection, especially protection of the heart. This is my tiny triquetra. My great grandmother was Irish and she had this symbol and necklaces and brooches and it symbolizes the three stages of life, maiden, mother, crone. This is a star and moon that I bought at a really rough stage in my life where I wanted to reclaim my identity. This is a Starlight ring. Starlight is known as the fairy cross and I was really excited to find this piece because I rarely ever see fairy crosses in jewelry. This of course is a lovely giant moss agate and if you don't know moss agate is my absolute favorite stone. It represents growth, prosperity, charisma, a really wonderful connection with nature and its spirits and I just absolutely adore it. I love this piece because it has those little clear bits as well. One of my favorite rings. This is my little impish fairy. She is a really great reminder to take things slowly and to do things with care. Um, she reminds me of those things because she has very pointy feet that literally draw blood. <laughs> this is my ring that is a symbol of Dionysus, my grapes. I have a really interesting relationship with Dionysus and he teaches me about excess and about overindulgence as well as brings lots of prosperity and fertility into my life. This is my wedding band. It is a lovely band of twigs that I absolutely adore. And of course, everything that I wear has to do with nature because I am a lover of nature and a nature witch. This ring is one of my favorites. It is a crescent moon and it has some growth coming out of the center of it like a plant springing forth from the night and it reminds me that so much growth can come from doing shadow work and understanding who you are and the reasoning behind your behaviors. This beautiful rose ring is one of the new pieces that I've just received and I absolutely love it. Snow White and Rose Red was always one of my favorite stories growing up. A rose with thorns symbolizes courage and beauty being found through adversity and that's something that I hold very close to me. All the experiences that we have as people really build a incredible, incredible person and I think that it's wonderful to celebrate those things. Now, a lot of my jewelry has rose symbolism. This piece here also is a rose that is intertwined with a serpent and that symbolizes health, beauty, and strength all together. It's this lovely dagger with three serpents, three being such a magical number, and these gorgeous serpents symbolizing fertility and rebirth, strength, and such a lovely bit of ferocity here. I love the idea and the duality of something that is strong and ferocious yet beautiful and delicate. 
So that balance is something that I hold very dearly to my heart. And last but not least, my constant trio, my fairy star and my Victorian pocket watch key, which has the number five on the other side. Five is my lucky number. There's also a tiny little Herkimer diamond on this chain as well. And I love the symbolism of having a key or wearing keys. It is something that reminds me that the key to happiness is with you at all times. And that is it. Happy New Year to you all. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Mwah!